Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durber with my wife, Alberta Durber. And we're just delighted to be able to share with you the truths of God's word once again. Luke one thirty seven says the same thing every time you turn to it. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. And boy, that's a good thing to know in the day we're living in. Sure and it's tremendous Tuesday. Tremendous. Tremendous Tuesday. Tuesday. April 28th. It's springtime. My goodness. Kentucky springtime. is beautiful in the spring. And uh, you know what I like about spring? Dogwood trees. Dogwoods? Dogwood trees. Yeah, my neighbor, brief, my neighbor. My na yeah, I know. I know they are. My neighbor, uh, Howard Grumberg, had a, had a dogwood tree. And that thing, uh, it, it, he's the only one on the block had one. And you know it, when it when it come into bloom, it, everyone everyone you know that Pink was. Pink or white? Pink, pink, and uh, they're the prettier ones. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we've been <laughs> teaching, we've been teaching now this book, Awake to Righteousness. And uh, if you want a copy of this, uh, my wife and I wrote this. Uh, you can contact our office here at eight seven five seven eight eight six. And we have it both in a hard cover, and now we got it in a soft cover edition, whatever you prefer. And it's just a good way, paperback. Uh, paperback. Uh, it's a good way to start your day. Absolutely. You know, uh, I start my day every day with God. Every day. There's only been a few times in my life when I haven't, and it's because I had to travel. Because, you know, of my whatever. And uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. And I Me tell either. God, I tell God on the way to the airport or whatever. I don't, you know. And, and uh, but anyways, uh, anytime while you're watching this, uh, you need prayer. Our number is 597-HELP, H-E-L-P, that's 4357. And it'll, it'll come up on the screen from time to time. Give us a call. We have trained, equipped uh, prayer counselors that can help you pray for you or with you. For you, if you have something, sickness or something that's going with you, if you need somebody to agree with you, you're believing God for something, whatever it may be, see. And so okay. uh, we pastor Faith Victory Church right here in Frankfort, Kentucky, right downtown here, 122 East Broadway. If you don't have a church home, come visit us. And uh, we have fun around here. We learn the Word of God. And That's we are good. going to get into this today. Are you? Would you read this, Alberta? Uh, I would. It's that. Tremendous Tuesday, April 28th. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, boy, this is one of my very, very favorite verses. And it's also probably one of the most important verses uh, that there is. Okay, it's in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove... Now, I, I, I read this one time in one of my Bibles, and the tra instead of prove, it said demonstrate. And I, that to me is the greatest. So that we can demonstrate what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, uh, when Philip and I were babies in the Lord, we would hear many times about God's three wills, his good will, his acceptable will, and his perfect will. Even as baby Christians, that didn't sound right. It made it seem as though God were confused yeah, I like it. Optional. Yeah. He had a good will, an acceptable one, and a perfect one. No. Low level, medium level, high level. In reality, what I observe in the lives of people who say that is that they, they do whatever they want and then ask God to bless it. One woman told me that her first marriage was God's acceptable will for her. But the second marriage was his perfect will for her. Pitiful. Read that scripture again. Be not conformed to this world or this world system or this world's way of doing things. But 
be transformed. We're getting way, it's way beyond this world's way. But be ye transformed. It's easy to just conform to something without struggle. God says, don't just settle for what the world is handing out. Come up here to what I have for you. You get transformed by changing everything you've learned by the world system and renewing your mind to my world, God's world. That's God speaking. God desires our transformation so we can prove or demonstrate what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Yes, God's will for his people is good, it's acceptable, and it's perfect all at once. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, there's, Those there's, are just there's, adjectives yeah. describing his will. His will. His will. It's good. His word. It's acceptable. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. You don't have a hard time accepting it. You don't have a hard time because it's good. I mean, you know, I, I've heard a lot of Christians say that. I mean, people say they don't want, they're not ready to get born again or get saved because they're having too much fun. They think, they think doing what God has, his will is boring. You know, you're not going to have any fun. God don't want you to have any fun. Well, that's because religion, no, no, exactly. religion, religion has. Sin consciousness. Well, not just that, but religion has these do this and don't do that. And there are some do's and don'ts in, in, in your Christian walk. But, I mean, they're, my they're goodness, for your ben our benefits. Anything, anything that's fun, I mean, I'm talking about clean fun. Real fun. It, you know, I mean, you know, I, I was raised on Sunday. You couldn't, you couldn't play baseball. You couldn't, you couldn't, uh, you know, go outside. You couldn't do anything. You know, it, it was a day of rest, and you, you, one thing you could do was eat. You so we come eat. home, we'd eat, and we, we'd sin eating. We you ate too much. Sleep. <laughs> yeah. But then, then uh, I forget an evangelist came through or something, and uh, preached something, and Daddy got a revelation, and all of a sudden it was okay for us kids. To go outside and play on Sunday. Praise well, the Lord. now the neighbors ain't you know <laughs> they, they 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 let mom and dad know you know you know you know Phillips up there shooting basketball, you know and and, and so on and so forth, and uh, I mean and you never you never mowed the lawn or anything like that on a Sunday. My goodness, you'd go to hell for mowing your lawn. So. And I'm, you know, and I you understand. Should. You should be playing instead of <laughs> mowing your lawn's work. Well. You know, the the point being is... No, I'm not, I don't mean that seriously. Yeah, the point being is uh, the man can impose upon you uh, their, their rules that can uh, that keep... That God. The, well, it, it's, it, it, it's bondage, see? But go ahead. Uh, yes, God's will for his people is good, acceptable, and perfect all at once. It's time for Christians, here it is, to get into the word of God, apply faith to what it says, and live in his will. I'm going to read that again because that's, that's very important. It's time for Christians to get into the word of God, apply faith. That's the major thing right there. Applying faith to it, to what the word says. Otherwise, you can't do it. And live in his will. God's will is for us to walk in health. God's will is for us to prosper in every area of our life. Every area. Mm -hmm. Do you know that poverty is not God's acceptable will for man? It's not good. Tell it's me about perfect. it. Jesus. It's not even his good will for man. It's certainly not his perfect will. We're supposed to be demonstrating the love of God in this dreary world. We have the power within us, and it's time to awake to righteousness and demonstrate his good, acceptable, and perfect will for our lives. Well, listen to this. Listen, you know what comes That's to a me. whole lot of stuff. Well, uh... That's a master key scripture. Yeah, it is. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now watch this. Tran the word transform is metamorpho. 
Oh, in the Greek, so, where we get so word metamorphosis from the caterpillar, to the butterfly. Uh, crawls everywhere to a butterfly that can fly Beautiful. now. That's you know we've talked that before, but there's another transformation in electricity. The the electrical companies have this massive power, mm -hmm. uh, so much power that our households can't handle it. It has to be transformed. Okay. And that's why they on the, on these posts out here they have transformers. Yeah. And what what's going on is you got this huge amount of power coming to you, but now it has to be downsized to where you can plug your iron in and iron your clothes. Where if it was hooked up straight to the power, it would fry uh your your house. Yeah, so Jesus. so it takes it takes massive power and it brings it down to a usable power. That's good. So what God has done, mm. he takes wow. his massive power mm. and through transformation in our mind, getting our mind renewed mm -hmm. to where it can become applicable in our lives to where it becomes usable. That's good. See, and so uh, how he does that is by the renewing of our minds. Yeah. And, you know, Alberta, we were confused. <laughs> we were, I mean, strife was our life. Can, you know, we, we were arguing all the time. It was one battle after another. We weren't even confused. That's just how we were. I mean, we thought that was... What do you mean? I was confused. I, I, what I mean is we weren't confused that that was, you know, <coughs> that we were confused living like that. That was just how we You accepted did. that's yeah, what life was. That's how it was, yeah. you know. And that's. But when we got born again, when God put our marriage together, when God healed us, we said, wait a minute. This ain't the... Uh, this, this is not my view of how I thought God was. And we dove. Shh into that word, into this right here. The very thing, you know, when I, when, when I had to leave the state of Kentucky years ago uh, or go to the penitentiary, that's how, that's how bad it was. My daddy gave me the Bible that they had, they had, they had given to me in, in Sunday school, you know, or whatever. And he said, boy, all your answers to life is right in here. Made me mad. Yeah, but I wasn't gonna say nothing to him. He's a big man, he, and and I thought to myself, I'm, I got the stupidest dad on the planet. He don't know what life's about. He don't know nothing about what's out there. Well, huh, all the answers to Everyone. life is right in that book. Everyone. And when you and I got saved, we be we dove into that thing. We shut everything off. I mean, people thought, thought, thought we got in some cult or something because all we did, we were making up for lost time. And when we came across new creation realities, when we found out that Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin, that we could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, my, my mind, my mind, which was at the time so full of uh, filth from all I'd exposed it to and, and because my mind was, was filthy the decision to accept that I was righteous was a struggle but as my mind began to be renewed and the only way you, well you can renew your mind with filth you can renew no, your mind true. with with a new Sports, job, sorry. you can renew your mind with with learning a, a new card game. Anything. Uh, yeah, anything that you don't know anything about, you can renew your mind Absolutely. by learning it. Well, the same thing. Jesus said, "Learn of me." When you were talking about your dad giving you the book, said all the answers are in here. You know, to life. Mm. I can remember when uh, we first got born. Well, it's when we first came back from the. Uh, mission field and we were living in a little camper and brand new little camper and all of a sudden there was this mildew smell in the camper and uh, I had tracked it down 
and found out where it was. And I looked up the word mildew in the Strong's. I remember this. See if it was in the Bible. I remember this. And I found the word mildew in the curse. Yeah. And so we got on it, you know, to get rid of that. We, we prayed, agreed, and came against it. We did a couple of things in the natural realm because we tracked it down. You, you, those of you who are listening, you need to understand this, that we call her Mama Alberta. Mama Alberta's got a nose, <laughs> unlike any nose I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that was strong. Yeah, yeah, I could smell that yeah, one. Yeah, that was. But, but uh, she's got to have it smelling right. Go ahead. I do. And, and so, you know, we got on it immediately, came against it. A curse causeless cannot come. And there was no reason for it to be there. And it had to leave because it was a curse. So uh, I was driving my car. I think I was, I could remember. I was in Lexington for some reason. I'm driving. And I'm listening to the Christian radio channel on a, on a station in my car. Very popular one at the time. I don't even know if I don't listen to it anymore. But I was listening, and there was a preacher on there, and he said, I wish I could tell you that there's an answer to everything in this book, the Bible. He said, but I can't tell you that because there isn't. I immediately turned it off. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was a baby Christian, but I immediately, see, God showed me, what, well, just finding mildew in there, that there's an sure. answer to everything sure. in life in that book, sure. but you have to search for it. Sure. I mean, that's all, and you get your mind renewed. I would have just accepted it like most people do. They accept mildew. Oh, well, you know, that's mildew. Mm -hmm. No, it don't belong to me. It's in the curse. Absolutely. And so uh, this, this book has every, and when you start learning and finding out who you are, you're a new creation and it just gets better and better and better hallelujah well it says in second corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 for all the promises of god in him are yes and in him amen unto the glory of god by us mm -hmm. and so uh, you have to renew your mind to that. Oh, absolutely. Because, watch this, people have taken their experiences, they've taken their failures and, and created a doctrine. Oh, absolutely. We've had we've had people in our church die yeah. of, of, of diseases and stuff, and then, but that don't change the truth. The word, no. Of that by his stripes we were healed. All the time. Right? And, and you know, people say, well, how come that happened? Well, Not being the, mixed with faith. if you want to know the answer to it, that's exactly right. Uh, and I'm not saying the people that died didn't have faith. They didn't have enough Enough. faith. And as pastors, obviously, we didn't have enough faith to, to, to intercede uh, on their behalf. But it's never, it's never, never that died. God didn't want to heal. It's never that uh, God does sometimes and sometimes he doesn't. But, but we got we to gotta get our minds renewed to this, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ oh, Jesus. God. That right there when it that That's was difficult. What shocked my soul when 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 I discovered that because I was raised, you know, and there's none righteous, no not one, all of our righteousness is as filthy, filthy rags, rags, you know, and <laughs> all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. Well that's true before Absolutely. you accept Jesus. Absolutely. See? But you take uh, and and then once you do accept Jesus, something happens here, but a whole lot needs to happen oh, here. Oh, a whole lot, dear Jesus. The, you know, uh, the salvation of the soul. You got to have, you, right here you get washed in the blood. Right here you get washed with the word. by the Washing by the water of the by word. The word, yes. And uh, because of a lack of knowledge, God's people perish. And uh, the only way, the only way, and most people, they're, they're too busy to give God enough time. Yeah, that's it, exactly. And, and you know, those of you who are listening, listen, listen to me. This, if, you know, you may be sitting there saying, well, I got kids to raise or my job is demanding or this or that. To tell us now watch that. this. Watch. Listen. Listen. Uh, start like this. When you get up in the morning, Pray. Take five minutes if you've been, if you've never started and just said, Lord, Lord, uh, I'm I'm acknowledging you today and I need your help today, and I'm just 
want you to help me learn uh, how to be what you said I am. Right. And then after you, and pray over your children and, and everything that, you know, you think you need to pray about, then do this. Then read one chapter of John, one psalm, one proverb. That'll take you about 10 minutes to do. And I guarantee you, if you do that for a month, if you do that for one month, you'll be transformed. Oh, you're like you. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see things. Major you'll see God's hand start showing up, and 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 people listen to that. They're like, right, right, right. No, no, no. This 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 book, this book is not like a Reader's Digest. It's not like you know uh, any kind of great novel out there. This thing's alive. It's God. It's God. It's God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And when you're reading this, personalize it. You know, when I read about uh, Peter walking on the water, I imagine myself out there. I imagine myself climbing out of that boat and just just stepping out there. You know, I do it one day. Nah, I don't know about all that, but uh, I do. I, if there's I a mean, need for it, and you know, but yeah, uh, that's not in my faith. I'm going to feed the multitudes. Yeah, we'll do that, but I ain't, I'm not looking to walk on water. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got enough things going on, even though there has been uh, people in the mission field in, yeah. uh, in, in Indonesia. Yeah, that, that's uh, powerful. Yeah, right. But anyways, uh, getting back to be not conformed. Go don't, along don't, with... Don't be, in other words, along. but be transformed. In other words, this world... This world automatically conforms us. What does it conform us in? Their way of living. It conforms us into the old man. Mm -hmm. That's that's the concept. We accept that's all where that. you're conformed to, the old man. Well, that's just you who know I am. when I got when I got born again, huh? I remember, we had the party house. Everybody come over to our house. We had it out in the country. You could turn the music up as loud as you want to. Beer cans could be flying. Dope oh, and I hated it when I got born again. Yeah, boy, well, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking <laughs> about before we got born again. And, uh, you know, people, when when we got saved, uh, they're like, you know, you were a lot funner the other way. Well, we were having a blast. I mean... It, you know, some people get excited about riding a roller coaster or jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. I got so excited about what this word was saying yeah. and discovering that I was the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh my. When I discovered the, the depth yes. of redemption that Jesus has brought to you and I and whoever is accept him as his personal savior, it's more than escape hell program. Oh God! I mean, that's that's a wonderful thing. I've led people to the Lord on their deathbed. You know, twenty minutes later, I wasn't trying to teach them that they could be the righteous God in Christ Jesus. I'd tell them, "Look, you better accept Jesus as your personal Savior. You about to take your last breath." So I, I get that. But church is supposed to be a place where you're being educated, where you're being trained and equipped for that ugly world that's out there, so you can overcome it. You See? know what? What I loved. When I learned, at first I didn't, <laughs> at first I didn't really love it, but you know, when we find out that we are healed, uh, when I found out that we're not the sick trying to get healed, mm -hmm. Jesus healed us. He took all our sickness, all our disease on his back 2000 years ago. When I found out that we are the healed, that the enemy's trying to put sickness on, that changed my whole life. And when you get that, and start working back. Well, our time's gotten away okay, from us. No, same, thing, do that now. same thing with righteousness. When uh, you find out you're the righteous oh, and, God. and the devil's trying to put sin on you. Look, we got these books available right here. Just call the office and, and, and our secretary tell you how you can yeah. get it or you can order it online. Uh, Stay hey, with us. We got service tonight, 7 o'clock. Come on out. We'll be glad to have you. And uh, if you need prayer, Five nine seven four three five seven, right? And my favorite verse on this tremendous Tuesday, Ecclesiastes eight four, where the word of a king is, there, there is power. Be a blessing. The Power of Faith programs are available on YouTube. 
24 7 so you can watch from anywhere at any time search for power of faith on youtube or go to youtube.com forward slash power of faith subscribe and click the bell to make sure you're notified whenever new episodes are posted If you missed the episode or you just want to go back and watch it over and over again, the Power of Faith YouTube channel is there for you. Hey, I want to uh, tell you about a book I wrote, Circle of Faith. I was on a 21-day fast and I asked the Lord, Lord, how can I teach my people faith? And I had an open vision. And in this vision, I saw this circle. And it starts at hope, goes to faith, tribulation, patience, promise, experience, back to hope. This is the circle of faith when you go on faith to faith. I think it'll be a blessing in your life. It's, it's helped many a person. Just contact our office and uh, we'll get that in your hands to you. And it, will, it, it, it explains a lot of things that uh, I didn't have anybody tell me when I was coming up. God bless you.